and who is my neighbor? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, how often do we feel welling up within us a certain aversion? Do we let this aversion progress into a repulsion to the point of hatred and disdain? If we have the grace to be assisting at Holy Mass this Sunday, we certainly would claim to be good Christians. Yet how many of us would confess to having a certain hatred for members of the political elite, for members of the church hierarchy, perhaps for illegal immigrants, for people of a different racial or national background, or even those who live next door, or perhaps for members of our own families, those under with whom we live. But if any man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. This is no doctrine of mine, but that of the beloved disciple who received this teaching from the Savior himself. The apostle goes on, and this commandment we have from God, that he who loves God should love his brother as well. In the Gospel of the Stay, our Divine Master gives us this twofold commandment, which seems simple enough. Yet, we too often miss the mark. For we, like the disbelieving Pharisees and lawyers of the ancient law to whom our Lord was preaching, are selected in whom we consider to be our neighbor. We profess to have the faith, and it is faith that shows us that Christ, who is dwelling in our hearts, that he may establish us in charity and grow in us by transforming us into himself and fill us with all the fullness of God. If all perfection consists in charity, if without love no virtue produces fruit for heaven, it is important for us to remember that love is not of the right kind unless it include our neighbor. And it is only after stating this particular that St. Paul affirms that love fulfills the law, and that love is the plenitude of the law. Thus, we find that the greater number of the precepts of the Decalogue, of the Ten Commandments, concern not our duties to God, but our duties to our neighbor. Only the first three commandments have to do with God, and the seven remaining concern our neighbor. And we are told that the love we have for God is only then what it ought to be when we love not only him, but also what he loves. That is to say, when we love man, whom God has made in his own image and likeness. Yet we might ask with the lawyer in today's gospel, and just who is my neighbor? Such being the importance of this law, it is necessary to have a clear understanding as to the meaning and extent of the word neighbor. In the mind of the ancient Jews, it comprised only the fellow members of their own race. And in this, they were following the custom of the pagan nations to whom every stranger was considered an enemy. But here in our gospel, we have a representative of this Jewish diminished law eliciting from him who is the very author of the law an answer, an answer which declares the precept in all of its fullness. This time he does not make his voice heard amidst thunder and fire as he did on Mount Sinai, but Christ, as man living and conversing with men, reveals to them, and in the most intelligible way possible, the whole import of the eternal commandment which leads to life. In a parable, Our divine Savior describes how there was a man who went forth from the holy city and how he fell in with a Samaritan, that is, with a stranger, the most despised and the most disliked of all those whom an inhabitant of Jerusalem looked on as his enemy. And yet the shrewd lawyer who questions Jesus, and no doubt all those who have been standing by listening to the answer, are obliged to own that the neighbor for the poor fellow who had fallen into the hand of robbers was not so much the priest or the Levite, though both of these were of his own race, as this stranger, this Samaritan, who forgets all national grudges as soon as he sees a suffering creature 
and cannot look on him in any other light than as a fellow man. Our Jesus made himself thoroughly understood, and everyone present must have well learned the lesson that the greatest of all laws, the law of charity, admits of absolutely no exception, either here or in heaven. A little-known bishop of the second century named Theophilus of Antioch helps us to understand that our neighbor is anyone. And the bishop writes, Now our Savior defines a neighbor not in respect of actions or honor, but of nature, as if he says, Think not that because you are righteous, you have no neighbor. For all who partake of the same nature as you are your neighbors. That is to say, all who share the human nature, all of our fellow men. Our dear St. Francis de Sales, known and proclaimed by Holy Church as a doctor of charity, further explains. Why do we love God? The cause for which we love God, says St. Bernard, is God himself. As though he had said, we love God because he is the most sovereign and infinite goodness. And why do we love ourselves in charity? Surely because we are the image and likeness of God, and whereas all men are endowed with the same dignity, we love them also as ourselves, that is, as being holy and living images of God. Therefore, the same charity which produces the acts of love of God produces at the same time those of the love of our neighbor. And even as Jacob saw that one same ladder reaching between heaven and earth, serving the angels both for descending and ascending, so we know that one same charity extends itself to both the love of God and our neighbor, raising us to the union of our spirit with God and bringing us back again to a loving society with our neighbors. Always, however, on the understanding that we love our neighbor as being after the image and likeness of God, created to have communication with divine goodness, to participate in his grace, and to eventually enjoy his glory. Dear friends, let us take this lesson which we receive from the Lord himself to heart. Let us make no exception to our charity. Our love for God is proved in our love for our fellow men without any exception whatsoever. Our Savior says in another place, love your enemies and do good to them that hate you and pray for them that persecute you. Here is a true indication of a perfect faith and a perfect love for Almighty God. May the Sacred Heart of Jesus, that burning furnace of charity, an abyss of all virtue, purify our innermost selves of any and all rancor, discord, and hatred. May he grant us the grace to love all of our fellow men, redeemed too by his most precious blood, in and for him, so that we may all stand together one day before his throne, singing the eternal hymn of his love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't forget to click subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future videos.